Good morning, YouTube. My name is Justin. I run this channel here on YouTube called Bike and Bird, where we do gear reviews, bike builds, group rides, you name it. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. On today's highly requested video, we're going to be comparing and reviewing the Biltwell Lane Splitter versus the Bell Eliminator. <laughs> Both newly introduced to the mid-range cruiser market, the Bilbo Lane Splitter and Bell Eliminator have been going head to head and people have been asking my opinions on which one I think is best. I've got quite a few miles on both these helmets so I've actually put them through the paces and the best way that I could think of putting them head to head is going to be going by category and tell you who wins each category. So let's jump into it. Category number one is going to be style. Now I do want to point out that both of these helmets have my personal graphics added to them after the fact. This one came as a standard red helmet, this one came as a standard black helmet. The Lane Splitter comes in a good variety of colors both in gloss and matte finishes as well as a few special editions. The Eliminator on the other hand doesn't have as many color options but it does have more design options. Now of course this is going to be based completely off personal preference but to me the Lane Splitter just looks like a Simpson knockoff. While on the other hand, the Eliminator does have that racing kind of car drag strip feel to it. Bell has been in the drag racing industry, Biltwell has not. And I also think that the Eliminator is going for a completely different look of the auto-inspired styling as opposed to the lane splitter. So for the style category, I'm gonna to have to give it to the Eliminator. Category number two is going to be visor quality. Now this is focusing specifically on the optics themselves. The actual visor portion of the helmet, how well is it protect against fog? How well is the actual optics of the visor? First thing we're talking about is anti-fog. Now the Billwell Lane Splitter, I know that this standard lens is not a anti-fog lens, but I have used it with the anti-fog before. Uh, this has just become my nighttime helmet, so I keep a clear lens on it. More on that here in a second. But even even with the anti-fog lens attached to the lane splitter, the Eliminator outperforms it hands down. I've used the lane splitter in as low as I would say 40s, low 40s, and the Eliminator pretty much the same. I think 37 is the lowest I got, but hands down the Eliminator protects against fog way better. I've been riding in 37 degrees in the Eliminator trying my hardest to fog it up to try to test it and that's just not happening because the Bell ProVision is an actual dual pane lens. It's basically a integrated pin lock. So that being said, point eliminator for that portion. Next up is field of view. And honestly, these both of these helmets are, are great. They are very neck and neck. If I had to pick one, if you had a gun to my head saying you must pick one, I would say that the eliminator barely edges it out. Moving on to optics, how well you can see through the glass, how well the glass or glass looks. Although the Biltwell is very good, there's nothing I would say that is super wrong with it. I'm also going to have to lean towards the Eliminator once again. They have class one optics on this helmet and it just looks better than the lane splitter. The one thing I've noticed about the lane splitter is there is a slight lens warp in it, but I will say I'm very picky when it comes to that. So if there's any sort of skew in the lens to where, you know, the pavement looks wavy or something like that, I usually notice it and I pick it up. But the Bell Visor is probably one of my favorite things on this helmet. And last but not least is going to be tint. Like I said, I know this is clear, but I have used the same mirrored lens on the Lane Splitter, or Biltwell's version of this mirrored lens. And I will say the Lane Splitter does take this category, but just by a margin, both of them are lacking in my opinion. Both of them I wish got darker. And another thing that hurts both these helmets is neither company offers a photochromatic lens or a transition lens from where it goes from clear to tint. That's an option that a lot of companies are putting out now, and I wish I would see that on one of these helmets. Now there is rumors that Bell is developing theirs. They do have the, uh, I think it's called Pro Tint Visors across a lot of their lines, but as of recording this video, that is not an option on the Eliminator. Moving on to category number three is gonna be visor performance. That's gonna focus on the hinge mechanism as well as the overall usability of the visor. Now the first thing I wanna talk about is visor swapping. Now I mentioned earlier that this helmet has pretty much become my dedicated nighttime helmet and that's because both of these helmets suck at swapping the visor. 
Over here on the bell, not only is it not toolless, but it requires two separate sizes of hex keys. So you're carrying two tools as opposed to one. And then over here on the bell well, although also not toolless, it only requires a standard Phillips or flathead screwdriver, which you can also use a small coin to get it on and off. So just because I have to pick a winner in this subcategory, it's gonna have to go to the lane splitter. The next thing I wanna focus on is the hinges themselves. Both of these helmets feature a one button lock down here at the bottom on the left side, talk about that in a second, which you pull up on and it pulls up. As you can hear, the lane splitter has some detents, but they're kind of pointless. If you're going anything over 20 miles an hour, that thing's coming straight down. I've adjusted it. I have gone on the internet and looked at things. I have done everything I can. It's made it better, but uh, it still sucks. Coming over to the Bell Eliminator, we have the same one button system on the left side, but this one is adjustable. This little button on the inside can be loosened and turned to where your actual point of it locking closed is either softer or harder, if that makes any difference. It's harder and firmer of a seal or a softer and looser of a seal. The main reason I don't like those buttons or hinges being on the left-hand side is because anytime I pop my visor open, I'm usually coming to a stop or stopped, which means I have my clutch in. I'm not the person that puts my bike in neutral at a stoplight because I want to be able to get the hell out of the way if necessary. With that being said, if you're wearing one of these helmets, you're holding your clutch in, you have to turn your head all the way to the right, get your thumb over, fumble around for it, finally find it, and then lift it up. I think it'd be much easier if they included them on both sides or one in the middle or anything other than just one button on the left side. But I digress. Coming back over to the Bell Eliminator and talking about the hinge specifically, although it does not have detents, it does have adjustable tension on the visor. That one hex key, one of the two hex keys that you need to remove the visor also adjusts the tension on the visor itself. So as you can see, I've got quite a bit of tension on this visor. That being said, I can ride with this thing all the way up and mostly kind of somewhat in between. I would say any Anything over highway speeds kind of gets kind of stupid, so it does kind of start flopping around, but I can adjust that if I wanted to. So in the subcategory of the hinge itself, Bell's gonna win. Also another thing I wanted to point out in the lane splitter is that since you're not able to adjust how tight that seal is when it is closed, the seal around the bottom is definitely not as strong as the seal on the eliminator. The seal on the eliminator is great. The seal on the lane splitter is quite mediocre. Moving on to the next category is comfort. So we'll start over here on the lane splitter. It does feature some nice soft padding on the inside. It's very thick around the cheek area. It's not so thick that it's pushing in, but it is, it is very thick. And it uh, continues that same thickness pretty much around the entire helmet, even up on the top of the crown. Coming down the chin strap, it does have the same material that it has on the cheeks down the chin, but only about for about that much. We'll talk more about that here in a second. It does have a much rounder shape than the uh, Eliminator. It's much more of a circle as opposed to an oval, and you can definitely feel that in the top crown of your head. I personally really like that because I've got more of a round head and it did, it did fit me very well. Now moving over to the Eliminator, the padding on the cheeks is definitely not as thick as it is on the Biltwell, but it is more comfortable, if, especially now that I'm feeling these at the same exact time. You can tell that the material that the padding is wrapped in over here on the Eliminator is much higher quality. It's much more soft, it's much more comfortable. I will say that the padding on the back of the neck and around the sides of the helmet is much thicker than the Eliminator. I'm sorry, than the Lane Splitter. But I will say that the crown of the helmet, although plush up front towards this part of your head, up on the very top, it is lacking. It's only about maybe that thick, if that. And the, uh, the lane splitter definitely has more of that padding up top than the eliminator. But with the fit being more oval, that part of the helmet doesn't really sit on top of my head, so it doesn't really bother me that much. Having a lot of cushion up on the front as well as on the back of the neck is a lot more comfortable for me. One area that the lane splitter is winning at though is that the sides of the helmet, the profile along the bottom, the sides of the helmet sit higher up on my head around the back of the neck area, so I'm able to rotate my head around a lot more comfortably 
comfortably than I am here with the Eliminator. The, the Eliminator feels a little bit more bulky, but if I had to pick a winner, I'd still go with the Eliminator just because of the, first off, the quality of the padding as well as the thickness of the padding up at the forehead area. Category number five, venting. Now, venting was a topic of debate for both of these helmets. The lane splitter because, well, as you can see, the vents up front and the eliminator for the very controversial grommet holes up along the top of the head. Now, why did I tape up these vents? Well, it's actually because of the reason that people don't like the holes on the top of the helmet here. And it was mostly due to a rainstorm. I got caught in a rainstorm coming back from Dallas one night and I was just getting pelted in the face with water. That These vents up front let in a ridiculous amount of water to the point where I had to tape it up. I actually untaped it since then, but went on a cold weather ride and realized that I don't enjoy having that much cold air forced onto my mouth. It, it literally hits you right in the mouth, it dries out your mouth, it makes your lips chapped. I didn't enjoy it, so I just went ahead and taped them up permanently. Well, I guess semi-permanently, it is just tape. Uh, the only other vent up front here is on the sides on the lane splitter and then it has one vent back here on the back for an exhaust vent. Moving over to the Eliminator, it has four vents in the front, one on the top, one on the bottom, one on the top, one on the bottom, as well as all of these holes, nine holes in total up top here, but does not have any exhaust ports in the back. Now, if you watch my Eliminator review, you probably know what I'm going to say, but these nine vents up top, these chimney holes, as I like to call them, actually operate like chimney holes. They pull air out, they do not force air in. Each little grommet has a lip around it, which is basically creating a vacuum inside these holes, which is sucking air out of the helmet as opposed to forcing air into the helmet like these vents up front are. While I'm wearing this helmet, I literally have to put my head at this angle here to get any sort of air going into the helmet as opposed to sucking it out. Also, with these vents being on the side and not directly in front, not only does it make it mounting my GoPro a lot easier, but it's forcing the air around the sides of my face and not directly blowing it into my mouth and nose area. Unfortunately, I don't have the experience in this helmet in the triple digit temperatures like I do in the Billwell. The highest I've gotten up to is about 85, but even then, this helmet was comfortable. But it was also comfortable down into the 37 degree range. Now, unfortunately, I haven't been able to ride in a downpour in this helmet to test how much water gets in these holes, but given my previous explanation, I don't think it would be a ton if you were moving because of the air that pulls air out. I don't think that you would get soaked as a lot of people are suggesting it would. But neither of these helmets feature closing vents of any kind. So given the current circumstances, I'm gonna have to give another win to Bell here, uh, just because the vents on this helmet operate much better than the exhaust vent on the back of this helmet. Plus the front vents being on the side as opposed to the front of the mouth was a big plus for me as well. Which brings me to my next category, aerodynamics. Now I will say that both of these helmets are actually very good aerodynamically. I've taken both helmets on the highway for extended periods of time. I don't really feel that much fatigue. I will say though that I do feel more drag with the lane splitter than I do on the Eliminator. So much so that I actually had an extra large in this helmet before my weight loss. I lost about 50, 60 pounds, lost a lot of weight in my cheeks to where I was, I should have been wearing a large, but wearing an XL, my helmet was coming up to my nose. That's how much pullback is on the helmet itself. Now, of course, I know that is primarily due to me wearing a wrong size helmet, but even with the correct padding now in the helmet, I do still feel a little tug on the back of my neck, but it's very, very, very negligible. Definitely not a deal breaker uh, for either the lane splitter or the eliminator. Let's talk about noise. The Billwell, although it does have a thinner shell than the Eliminator, is better at noise reduction. I will say that both the lane splitter and the Eliminator let in a good amount of engine noise so you can hear your bike, you can hear the road around you. The lane splitter does a much better job at blocking out the wind noise around you. The Eliminator does not. It's actually a very, very loud helmet. I wear plug phones, so it's not a huge deal, but even with the plug phones in, in case you don't know what plug phones are, they're basically uh, earplugs and headphones that create a 26 decibel decrease. But even while wearing those, I can still hear the wind in the Eliminator. So with that being said, Biltwell takes the wind for noise reduction. Ah, moving on to chin strap. Now, if you watch my uh, Eliminator review, you know that I had a lot of complaints about the chin strap. It features a Magnafusion Strap Keeper magnetic system, which 
is a total pile of crap. Basically what it is, is it's two D-rings with a magnet on one of the D-rings. You feed the uh, strap through like normal and instead of having a button that you click up, it just grabs it. Which I will admit is convenient not having to fumble around for that button and just slap it up there. But it's a magnet. It's always trying to grab. So when you're trying to put it through the D-rings, it grabs. When you're trying to take it out of the D-rings, it grabs. When you put it on, on your bike or set it on your tank or something, it grabs. But I do like a few things on the chin strap. First one being is that the D-rings on this helmet are very good. You ask yourself, how can D-rings be better on one helmet than the other? It's actually very simple. They took the D-rings and extended one of them so you can put, so they could put the magnet on it, but actually it makes it really easy to get your finger in there and pull on it as opposed to sitting there fumbling for that extra piece of fabric that's hooked onto one of the D-rings to loosen up your strap. Another thing I like about this helmet is not only do they put padding on the entire strap or where the entire strap touches your neck, they also made that removable. So when you take out your line to wash it, you can take that part out as well. Moving over to the lane splitter. It's very, very, very simplistic. Like I mentioned earlier, it does have the material that covers the cheek pads, but it's only for about that much, leaving about, I would say about that much on average of the bare strap touching your neck. And I will say, just feeling these side by side now, that the actual strap material on the Eliminator is better than the Lane Splitter. The Lane Splitter has a very rough, almost like those uh, those belts you had in Pee Wee football, those double D-ring belts, not very comfortable at all. But sticking with the simplicity of it, it does feature a standard snap button strap keeper that does move. So depending on how much strap you have left, you can adjust where that strap's up to. But to the case of the Eliminator, it has your standard cloth flap here on the D-ring. So I have a hard time picking a winner here. Uh, I personally use a quick connect now, so I don't really care about either of the straps, but if I had to absolutely pick one, it would have to be the Eliminator. Even though I absolutely hate that Magnafusion strap keeper, having that padding around my neck is that much of a big deal for me personally than the lane splitter having that bare strap touch your neck. Go ahead and move on to the next category, which is safety. This one's an easy one because the departments of safety places choose it for me. Uh, both helmets are both ECE and DOT certified. So by those standards, they are equal. Which brings me to Bluetooth compatibility. As you can tell, I have Senna Bluetooth communicators on both of these helmets, both of which feature speaker pockets on the inside of the foam. Both have pretty much the same spacing form. Both work well. The reason I'm going to give the lane splitter the win here is because its outer shell is thin enough to put the clamp mount on the Senna. The Eliminator, too thick. You have to use a stick-on mount. Not a big deal because the stick-ons are very good. I just prefer having it clamped on. It's, it's more of a peace of mind thing for me. The second to last category on my list is going to be weight. Bell is taking the win here at three pounds, three ounces compared to the lane splitters, three pounds, seven ounces. But we are literally talking the difference of four ounces. I, if you would have had me pick these up and guess which one is lighter, it, it's pretty dead on. I mean, maybe the Eliminator, but I mean, of course it is, but by four ounces, it's very, very, very negligible. And last but not least, the good old price category. At the time of recording this video, you can get this lane splitter in a standard color for $249, or you can fork out an extra $50 and get one of the limited editions. Or you can go for the Bell Eliminator coming in at $399 at the time of recording for one of the standard versions or any of the other colors, or $599 for the carbon fiber version, which weighs in under three pounds. Both of which have visors available on the market, multiple different colors, both around the $45, $50 range. So I'm sure you're asking the question, Justin, which one do I pick? And honestly, I don't know. It's really gonna depend on what you're gonna use it for. Is the Bell Eliminator $150 better than the Lane Splitter? Yes, if you're going to be able to use it. I would say just feeling these helmets, seeing these helmets, riding with these helmets, the Bell Eliminator does feel like a higher quality helmet. I wouldn't necessarily say it's $150 more, but some of the creature comforts that you do get with the Bell Eliminator, like the nicer materials, the nicer uh, strap coverings, the better venting, I could see spending $400 on this helmet. 
Now going to the other end of the spectrum, if you're just a bar hopper or around the town kind of rider, maybe a weekend warrior, and you don't want to drop $400 on a helmet, you're getting the same safety out of the lane splitter for $150 less. Yes, you're not getting the build quality or you know the, the anti-fog lens like you do on the Eliminator, but you're also $150 richer at the end of the day. If I had to break it down by bang for buck, I would say that the lane splitter is going to give you a better deal dollar for dollar. A lot of that has to do with some of my gripes, like the visor. Having to have two separate tools to take a visor off, I think is kind of ridiculous in 2019. But for me personally, I'm gonna continue using the Eliminator just because for me it's more comfortable. And like I said, just the build quality, the feel of it, the comfort of it is a little bit better for me. And uh, the visor functionality is better. But of course, I am just a YouTuber. My opinions literally mean nothing. But hopefully I've helped you out on this video. If I did, please hit that like button. If you're interested in purchasing either the lane splitter or the bell eliminator, please visit the links down in the description. I have links to both helmets over at getlower.com. Like I mentioned earlier, if you wanna see more videos like this, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.